So, let's talk about time, specifically the measurement of time in a fantasy world. We have been measuring time for as long as we've been around as a species in all likelihood. And that is how I'm going to tackle today's video. I'm going to do a brief history of the measurement of time in our world. I'm going to cover some authors who have done time measurement in their worlds very well. And then I'm going to talk about the impact that time measurement has on language and expressions and culture. Before we get into it, please do hit the subscribe button down below. It really does help the channel grow. Okay, let's get cracking. Time measurement. So we need to distinguish here between time keeping and time measurement. Time measurement is generally a public activity and it is what we talk about when we talk about clocks and clock towers and sundials. All of these devices were geared towards us understanding each other. So when I say I am releasing my videos at 5 o'clock Central European time every Tuesday and Friday, then that is a time measurement activity. Time keeping is a kind of personalized thing where I keep time based on my measurements and, and how I structure my day. So what I want to discuss today is specifically time, me uh, time measurement. Okay, so our earliest measurement of time was based around uh, measuring the astrological body movement, yeah? the movement of the sun. In, in essence, like it's a very swanky way to say we measured the movement of the sun. And Egypt had the, probably the first devices there, which were the big obelisks that they built. In terms of what obelisks actually measured is they were a form of sundial, right? So there's the obelisk and then the sun moves around it and the shadow moves telling the hours. And that's the basic principle behind sundials as well, which were extensively used in the Mediterranean. But sundials do have their limitations. You Firstly, you need the sun in the sky, you need it to not be cloudy and so on. So it works well enough for the Middle East, but it's not, a, it's not great when, when you need to measure time at night or if you need a precise measurement in winter when there's much less sunlight and so on. The Greeks invented the water clock, which they called uh, by the word water thief, and it is the clepsydra. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and what the water clock did was it was a vessel that poured water into another vessel at a regulated flow. And depending on the level in the second vessel, you knew what time it was. And that's basically how a water clock worked. Now, there were more complex forms of water clocks that included mechanical uh, faces and gears that turned and so on. But it was all based on the flow of water. Plato, who's credited with the original invention of the water clock, actually managed to invent an alarm clock based on the water clock. So uh, according to the descriptions as we understand it, it was lead balls within a container. And as the water level rose, these lead balls were pushed. Obviously, they couldn't float, so there had to be a channel that they were pushed through. Um, these lead balls were pushed out of the container and they clattered onto a metallic striking surface which woke up the students at Plato's Academy. So there you go, there's a Greek alarm clock for you. Candle clocks are the last um, flow measurement time keeping, a uh, time measurement device that I want to discuss. So a candle clock works on the principle of a candle burning down at a steady rate. And the first mention of a candle clock was by the Chinese poet Yu, Yu Yin Fu, written in 520 AD. Now, how a candle clock works is it's a candle that 
burns down at a specific rate and it has marks on it or behind it in a box that indicate how far, uh, how far it's burned down in terms of measurable units of time. The most complex candle clock was invented by al Jazari in 1260 in 1206 AD and it included a dial to display time and it was actually a really complex clock because how it worked was as the candle burned down it gets lighter and as it gets lighter this then allowed mechanic counterweights to change the time displayed on the dial face which is a super complex candle clock. Candle clocks also allowed for alarms to be set or timers to be set because you put a nail into the into the candle and then as the candle burns down the nail falls out and it falls onto a metallic striking surface which makes uh, a sound allowing you to have a timer or a alarm clock. Can candle clocks is what I went with in my world and I will discuss how that changed the language that I used in my in my story when I get there. Now all of the clocks I've discussed thus far measure the flow of something, the, the movement of the celestial bodies in the sun or the flow of water or the rate at which something burns. But, in, but we eventually moved away from that measurement of time and towards a measurement um, not dependent on the flow of time but on regulated ticks. And this came with the virgin foilet clocks that were based on a system of weights and counterweights. The oldest, uh, one of the oldest examples that we know of is the Salisbury Cathedral clock that was built in 1386. It strikes a bell at specific times rather than having a clock face because the primary driving need for understanding timekeeping was that the monks needed to know when to go to prayers. So because that was a requirement, you had the bell clocks and the clock towers that announced what the time is rather than having a display face that people need to check. So from these uh, weights and counterweights uh, of the mechanical clocks, we moved on to spring-based clocks, um, which it was invented in 510 by Peter Heinlein of Nuremberg. He invented the first spring-loaded clock. So as the spring wound down, the mechanical parts of the clock ticked on, measuring the ticks in time. And then the real breakthrough in modern time measurement came about by um, Dutch urologist Christian Huygens. And I hope I didn't really mispronounce his name there. Um, and he invented the pendulum measurement of time. So the pendulum swinging uh, of, of the grandfather clocks and so on as well as the spiral spring, which is what enables us to have wristwatches. So as the spring winds down, the mechanics in the, in the wristwatch move through the ticks, which gives us our seconds. And then eventually we had quartz crystals, which gave us um, our wristwatches in the 1920s. And then we had computers and now we have atomic time and incredibly precise timekeeping based on digital timekeeping, uh, digital time measurement. And that is a brief history of how we measure time, but let's apply that to a fantasy world. So there are two authors that I want to highlight as doing a great job with time measurement in their worlds. The first is Jacqueline Carey from the Shields Dart series. So she has urologists who cry the time. I remember this phrase so well from the books where she says, and the urologist cried one o'clock and the urologist cried two o'clock. So you know that there are people who precisely measure the time. She doesn't go into detail on how they measure the time, just that they do. But there are people who precisely measure the time and then announce that measurement to the city, which is a very interesting uh, approach, almost like a bell tower, except that it's people who, who come out and say what time it is. 
The other fantasy author that I want to highlight in this respect is Mercedes Lackey from the Valdemar series. Now what she did is, is she went with a candle clock and she talks about a candle mark being her measurement of time or a mark and she says you know a mark has passed I'll see you at the, this mark of the candle so she actually does do some changes to her language because of her timekeeping which segues me into what I did in my story so I also went with a, a candle based clock device but I felt like I was missing a trick when I used expressions like now, right now, just now, a few moments past, some time later. So I then delved deeper into time and time expression. And I came up with a whole series of expressions to exp that my characters in my story use to express time in their world. And I based that around this candle clock that I used. So instead of saying time is passing, I would say the candle burnt down. Instead of saying I ran out of time, I would say I ran out of candle. Instead of saying a moment, I would speak about a flicker because the flame flickers and that indicates a moment. Instead of saying... Um, as the um, I want to buy more time, I would say I stretched my wick. And I, I think that this element of timekeeping really added depth and feeling to my fantasy world because it is in keeping with the timekeeping device that my characters use that they would use these expressions rather than our expressions which are based on our time time measurement devices. That's how I measure time in my world and the changes that that has made to my language. How do you measure time? What do you think about changing expressions to match time? Let me know in the comments. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you on Friday for another episode of Just In Time World.